Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Art, and in this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to be talking a little bit more about uh, performance programming. So in this case, we're going to concern ourselves with how we pass parameters to functions. So let's go ahead and open up a, uh, we'll look at a simplified example, but then we'll run uh, an example with some more uh, clarifying uh, prints in it that will help us understand it better. So uh, we're going to concern ourselves with what happens when we uh, move uh, or, or when we have a function that takes a, a vector as an argument or we want to pass a vector to a function and then get the vector back from a function. So the most simple example we can come up with, right, so we've got say a for loop, right, and so we're going to clear the vector every single iteration, then we're going to load some numbers, right, so you know in a real application this might be, these two operations are likely to be, you know, much farther spread out. So we'll initialize some numbers, we'll do a whole bunch of stuff with that vector, and then eventually maybe we go back around in a loop and we clear it out and we start with a new set of numbers, right? So uh, we're just reducing it for simplicity in this, uh, in this case. But we'll see why it's so important of how we actually do this. So let's take the most simple case, right? So the most simple thing we can do is just pass a vector by value, right? So let's go ahead and get rid of that highlighting. So to do this, right, so we'll go ahead and pass in a vector int, uh, a vector of integers by value, v, and then we'll return a vector of integers, right? So uh, when we have this, right, so this will get copied in using a copy constructor into our temporary uh, variable here, right, v, and then we'll just say push back uh, all of these, uh, we'll push back, you know, say a thousand elements into our vector. Now this isn't, uh, there's not a terribly much we can do here, right? So this is we're going to require a number of allocations. So vectors, if you if you do or you do not know, vectors are dynamically allocated, which means that you know they'll have a certain amount of space associated with them. We try to push something back. We have to do a check to see if there's enough space, right? So if we don't have enough space, we allocate more memory, right? So in this case, you can see it. It's a um, it's an exponential increase in the allocations, right? So first we'll, we'll say allocate for one element, then we'll allocate for two, then four, then eight, then 16, then 32, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? It's because, you know, we don't want to keep paying this penalty for dynamic allocation, right? So sometimes we'll, uh, we'll kind of overestimate how many elements we need. Uh, that way we're not continuously dynamically allocating because that's an expensive process. So in this case, right, so we'll have, you know, about log base two dynamic allocations. And then what will happen is, uh, you know, we'll return, right? And so, uh, you know, if we return something that gets passed by value, you know, C++, you know, is nice enough where, uh, you know, this will actually automatically use move for, uh, on return for pass by value parameters, right? And so what this means uh, you can think of this instead of having to copy that entire vector back, right, of say a thousand elements, we don't have to copy the entire thing. We can basically just steal the pointer, right? So you can think of that, uh, you can think of move as kind of, you know, being pointer stealing for things uh, like pointers. Now for, you know, more primitive types like an integer, it will act more like just a copy. So uh, in this case, right, we'll go ahead and show how this one runs. So if we go ahead and do, uh, Let's go ahead and compile our other example, right? So with, with some prints in it, right? And let's see what happens on uh, iteration zero, right? So on iteration zero, so here's our main function, right? So uh, we see that before clear, right? Size and capacitor zero and after clear, everything's still zero. We haven't done anything with it yet. Then we see from uh, numbers, uh, load numbers by value, right? So this is our pass by value implementation. The size and capacitor is still zero, right? which makes sense. And then uh, we load 1000 numbers in, which requires uh, 11 dynamic allocations, right? So, you know, ending capacity was 1024, which makes sense because the vector starts out with no uh, memory associated with it uh, in this case. So then it allocates uh, space for one integer, then two, then four, then eight, All right? So this will end up giving us 11 dynamic allocations, All right? So, you know, okay, that's okay. But let's see what happens on the second iteration. It's really on the second iteration and all the subsequent iterations that we really care about and that we see a problem, right? So on the second iteration, what happens? So before clear, we end up getting a size of 1000, capacity 1024, right? Because we loaded 1000 elements 
and the capacity is still 1024. And this is because, again, we have those, uh, we're using a move there, or we're automatically using a move for those pat that pass by value parameter. So what that allows us to do is we basically just keep the same memory. So we still have the thousand elements and we still have the capacity of 1024. After we clear, we don't get rid of the allocated capacity. All we do is we get rid of uh, the size, right? So we get rid of all the elements. Now, uh, the next thing we do is what happens when we go ahead and uh, pass this to this load numbers function again, right? So here we see that when we print out the size and the capacity uh, on the second time we go into that function, it remains zero, zero, right? And then we have to do 11 dynamic allocations again to load 100 numbers, right? And so these are 11 dynamic allocations and we'd rather not do that. So, uh, you know, why did this happen, right? So we had this uh, capacity here already, but when we go ahead and, you know, copy it into that function, right? So remember I said it used the copy constructor, right? It's smart enough to say, okay, well, you're copying something with a capacity, but the size is zero. It's smart enough to know, okay, well, I'm just going to get rid of that capacity, right? I'm just going to pretend that there's nothing allocated because that's expensive and there's nothing being stored there, right? So when that copy constructor will go ahead and pack everything back down to zero in this case, right? So uh, we end up having to have 11 dynamic allocations. And if we go ahead and go to, you know, uh, if we look through every subsequent iteration, right? We see that they all have to do these 11 dynamic allocations. Okay, so that's clearly bad, especially if we have, uh, if we're doing this loop many, many times and we have to do many allocations. So let's see a way that we can make this better. So let's go ahead and remove this binary and then we'll go ahead and update it to the second, uh, the, sep the second version, right? And let's go ahead and recompile and let's open up our simplified version, right? So inside of here, right, we'll go ahead and look at pass by R value reference, right? So we can pass by an R value reference, right? So R value references will have these uh, two ampersand signs. And this basically means, uh, if, you know, with L values and R values. So L values can be on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. Um, R values can only be on the right-hand side. So you can think of this somewhat as a constant reference. Um, so here we're doing the exact same thing in terms of inside of the uh, function itself, right? So we're still just pushing back. Uh, and then over here, right, we're just going to, uh, so let's go ahead and change, right? So this was our by value. And what we're going to go ahead and do is because we're no longer passing, uh, we don't wanna pay that cost or have that problem that we have with the copy constructor, we'll get rid of the copy constructor down inside of our main function, right down in here, by explicitly using move, right? So move will allow, allows us to use, uh, allows us to instead basically do that pointer sealing instead of using the copy constructor, right? So it, uh, in this case, we won't you know pack down and get rid of everything. So what happens is we go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and push back everything and then we'll go ahead and return uh, our so, so here's our other one. First, we'll just return normally, right? So it's going to return a vector int and we're taking an R value uh, reference as a, uh, as a parameter. So let's go ahead and see what happens, right? So let's go ahead and do vector arg uh, and let's look at the zero iteration. So this time, right, the first iteration, exactly the same, right? So we have zero capacity and size. Then we go ahead and uh, go to the function, right? It takes uh, 11 dynamic allocations and the ending capacity after those 11 dynamic allocations was 1024. But what happens now on the first iteration? Now on the first iteration, something different happens. We see that before clear, the size is 1000 and the capacity is 1000, right? So, uh, and then after clear, right? So here's, uh, you know, size and capacity is both 1000, right? So if you remember last time, our size and capacity was 1000 and 1024. And then if we go ahead and go uh, from function load numbers r value ref one, we see that inside of the function itself, our capacity is a thousand now. So we passed in a vector, and it, the capacity wasn't zero now. So if we go ahead and load a thousand numbers in, we see that our ending capacity was uh, one thousand, 
right? So now we've retained our capacity, uh, but we see that there is still a slight difference here. So it's still not optimal. And that's the capacity, right? So uh, if we see that, you know, inside of our function, you know, last time we got, you know, a capacity that was 1024, right? It was 1024 when it returned from load numbers r value ref. But now we see that, you know, before clear, right? So after it's returned from the previous iteration, the capacity is only 1000. So what happened here? So if we go ahead and open up our code again, well, because we're no, we no longer have a by uh, value parameter, we're using this R value reference, it's going to use the copy constructor, right? And so just like how the copy constructor, you know, squishes down our vector and makes it so that we lose all of our capacity, it will go ahead and return just a, a fitted capacity, right? So instead of having 1024, uh, we're going to squish it down to just be a capacity of a thousand, right? So how do we get past this problem? And it turns out in this case, it's fairly easy. And that's where we get to this load numbers, uh, our value ref two, right? So it turns out we can make a slight change and we can explicitly use the move constructor. So we can just call uh, move, right? With V, right? Uh, so V is our vector. And this will go ahead and say, use the move constructor don't use the copy constructor. Remember, we, we were already using the move constructor for our by value parameter, but now because uh, we're no longer passing a parameter by value, we're doing it by our value, um, our R value reference. Now we have to go ahead and explicitly use the move constructor, right? So let's go ahead and uh, uh, let's go ahead and uh, open up vector org.cpp. We'll go ahead and move to um, R value ref two, right? And so we'll go ahead and compile this and let's run it, right? So we'll run it first for the zeroth iteration. It's exactly the same, of course, as we'd expect, right? So nothing happens the first iteration. We end up doing 11 dynamic allocations. And then, uh, it, but in the first iteration, right? We see that now we're going ahead and so our size and our capacity as returned from the previous iteration we retain both, right? So we keep the size and we keep the capacity. Now, after we clear it, there's the capacity still, size is gone. And then we go ahead and pass it to the function again and it retains the capacity, right? So now we basically fixed all these problems, but there is something that we should still understand, right? Or a couple things really. So let's go ahead and open up uh, our simple code, right? So here's our simple code again. So again, we move the, we use the, uh, move again so that we use the move constructor instead of the copy constructor when we're returning from our function that we pass by our value reference. So let's go ahead and uh, see what happens if we just pass by reference. So instead of our value reference, we're using just a normal reference, right? So it turns out, you know, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the, um, the call here, right? So again, we're using our value reference. We have to explicitly use move uh, when we're returning. And then um, if we go ahead and go all the way down to where we're calling it, we have to use the move as well uh, at the call site, right? So now our call site is getting kind of messy. So, you know, one thing, right? And this is the case for both of the R value reference ones, we have to use move. Um, now we see that if we just use a non-constant reference, right? So if we just use a normal reference, we see that A, we keep our uh, we keep our call site being very clean, right? So all we do is pass it. Um, we just pass it a, a vector, right? And then if we go to our function, we see that all we have is an argument that's a reference, and then we go ahead and just push back, and then we don't have even a return, right? Because it's passed by reference. So in this case, right? If we go ahead and uh, if we go ahead and go to vector r.cpp and we go to the last uh, example, right? And we recompile this and run it with zero and then run it with one, right? We see that we get the exact same thing as far as the number of dynamic allocations at every subsequent iteration. Uh, the size and capacity also gets maintained, right? So uh, it's important to know as far as performance programming goes that, you know, sometimes having a non-constant reference is optimal, 
right? So, or that you would want a non-constant uh, non reference because it can give you the optimal case. And indeed, this is the optimal case, right? Um, it's important to also know that in terms of uh, move itself, move isn't free, right? So there's there's certain cases where you know move actually has a penalty associated with it, right? So having a non-constant reference here is as good as you're going to get for something like this. So that's just a basic example of you know how move works, um, and you know how we should really take care as far as how we pass parameters uh, to functions in terms of retaining capacity and retaining size or rather we're just retaining capacity uh, between multiple different calls, right? And how we can optimize our code. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode. As always, feel free to check out um, all of my stuff at github.com slash coffee before arch. So we looked at C++ crash course today where we talked about this optimization stuff, but there's other stuff on GPU programming with CUDA as well um, and a number of other things. So we looked at optimizations, passing variables, and here's our vector arc.cpp. So feel free to download this and try it out yourself. Um, I'll go ahead and link down this. So the example today came um, from a couple slides in this uh, C++ uh, Con uh, 2018 by uh, Alan Talbot. I'll link that below. It's a great video. Uh, it goes over a lot of these things and we'll probably be covering um, a lot more recent topics that you know came out of you know these types of conventions. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. I'm Nick and I hope you have a nice day.